Hello Year 9 and welcome to your English lesson today. It's Tuesday the 12th of May. Um, hope you're all well and you enjoyed the long weekend, lovely sunny weekend. Um, and um, I wanted to start by saying um, a big thank you to um, all those students um, that completed their quiz um, yesterday. Um, I'm going through and looking at all your responses um, this week um, and also big well done to the students who tackled those reading comprehension questions um, last week as well. Um, so brilliant work by all of you. Um, as I promised, we are starting a new unit of work um, over the next couple of weeks and we're going to practice your writing skills. Um, and it's one of my favourite things to practice, if I'm honest. Um, there's so much that we can look at during this time when you're working at home. There's all sorts of little tips um, that I can teach you. Um, to help you improve your writing. So it's a brilliant time um, to get creative. Um, so let's focus on what we're going to do today. So a couple of things we're going to look at. There's one thing in particular. So first of all, um, we're looking at um, how to make the best use of compound sentences in our writing. What's that I hear you say? It sounds really exciting, doesn't it? I know it doesn't sound like the most exciting thing to do, um, but it's a really useful thing for you to practice. So we're going to start by just looking at that. Um, we're also going to look at um, a structure that I can give you that's going to help you um, hopefully structure your writing um, and write in a little bit more detail as well. So we're going to look at that today um, and uh, hopefully... If you follow my instructions today, you will be getting some really good practice at how to edit your writing. So without further ado, um, we're going to start with something new. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Um, right, we're going to start with looking at some root words in English. Um, and I'm going to do one of these, a lesson with you, um, so that we are practicing um, our vocabulary because we don't have word of the week at the moment so I've introduced this into our lessons. So we're looking at um, the root word which is um, auto and um, it's a word that you all know really well um, and it comes from Greek and it means self acting on its own. So as you can see here, you know, there's lots of uses of auto and I'm sure you can think of loads right now. Um, so autobiography, story of someone's life. Um, and you see here that bio means life. So it's self life. Makes sense. Uh, we've got um, autocracy, autocracy, can't speak autocracy um, and it's a government where one person or organization has all the power um, and you can see here that crat crassy means rule so autocracy you can see is about one rule um, and there's a little there's a little um, video that I'm going to show you in a moment um, that explains the difference between democracy um, oligarchy and autocracy um, and I just thought it was actually quite useful to look at uh, the difference of that right now uh, while we had an opportunity so let me just see if I can find the right I do if I press that hopefully <laughs> Hi and welcome. Hang on one second. Right, so if I perhaps do that, so right, just bear with me. That. Okay, there we go. Yay! Okay, you don't need um, me in the picture, so I shall just start this from the beginning. Come back to. Hi, and welcome back to the Overtopian YouTube channel. 
Today I'm going to teach you quickly about the difference in three major types of government that we learn in sixth grade. And what makes all of these governments different is how they let the citizens participate. Certain ones let the citizens participate a lot, like this one, and others not so much. So let's start with democracy. Democracy is the one that you and I are going to be most familiar with because that's what we have. Yay! And in a democracy, citizens have the power in the country, and they choose their leader. And this is how they choose their leader. They stand in line, and they have ballots in their hands, and they get to vote. And that's how they get to participate in the government. They get to vote for the leaders, and sometimes they vote for somebody and they don't like how they did their job. And then the next time they get to vote, they vote those people out. Sometimes they vote for someone and they like the job they're doing. So the next time they get to vote, they keep them in there. So that's how democracy works. And if you're ever unhappy in a democracy, you have got to vote. If you don't vote, you can't complain. All right, so that's a democracy. Next, we've got an oligarchy. An oligarchy has multiple leaders, has many people that have the power. Now, sometimes it might be multiple people, just like this, little egghead kingmen, okay? Kings or queens or multiple dictators that kind of rule as a group. Or some countries, it's just that all the richest people in the country get to make all the decisions. And the, the people who don't make a lot of money don't get the chance to make decisions. But in an oligarchy, multiple people in power, group of rulers with all the power, and then down on the bottom are the lowly citizens... And if you look close, they have sad faces. They don't get to vote. They don't have very much power. And they can't change the government, really, because these dudes are the ones with all the power. These dudes and dudettes don't have the power. These dudes do. So that's an oligarchy, when there's a group. The way I remember oligarchy is I think of the Olive Garden, because when you go to the Olive Garden, hopefully you eat with a group. And even their commercials, they tell you to bring your family. So think of it like that, like a group. A group of people who rule over the sad, lonely people. Okay, that's an oligarchy. A group of people who have complete control. And finally, autocracy. Autocracy is a lot like an oligarchy. But it's different because there is only one leader. Uno. Just one. One ruler has all the power. Usually a dictator could also be an emperor or a king. And again, you've got the people at the bottom. They don't have much power. They're not very happy because they usually don't get to vote. If they do get to vote, their vote can't kick this guy out. That would not make him a dictator. Okay, if he has all the power, then that means these guys don't. So he has all the power. That's an autocracy. One person has complete control. Citizens have little say in the government. Now, the way I remember autocracy is the beginning of the word autocracy is auto like a car and I don't know about you but when I'm driving a car I am the only person in control of that car when your parents are driving the car they are the one person in control of that car so think about a government like that in an autocracy there is one person in control of that government Um, okay, so that should make it really, really clear. Um, where is it? There we go. Hello! I'm back. Um, so let's go back to the PowerPoint. Um, <coughs> so you can see um, where auto comes from with autocracy. Um, makes complete sense. Um, and automate automation to put in machines that can do the work instead of people so can you see now how this um, root word of auto works with all of these other words um, to automate automation it's doing the work instead of people um, and just a little fact at the end here uh, did you know in ancient times some coins had the word autocrat written next to the image of the ruler's head to celebrate the power of the ruler and his ability to do what 
he wanted to do. Okay, so there you go. So a couple of things for you to think about here. Um, why was the root auto used for the word automobile? Come on, have a little think. Does it make sense to you? And she said it in the video, didn't she? So the idea that uh, there's one person driving the car seems to make sense, doesn't it? So it's auto. Um, uh, this one's interesting. Um, an autopsy is a medical investigation of a dead body by a doctor, usually a pathologist. Why might the word have the root auto in it? What do you think? Um, if you think about what the doctor is doing, uh, they are sort of investigating the body, the self, aren't they? Um, so I suppose that's where the word auto would come from. Um, and you can pause the video here and write your responses to these three questions um, using the the target root word auto. So the first one is what sports car, sports star or celebrity would you like to write an autobiography and why? Do you think automation is a positive or negative development? Are there any advantages to living in an autocratic country? Explain using one of these words because but so. Okay, so at this point, I would like you to pause the video and write your responses to those three questions. And you can do that now, please. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to uh, pause the video, write your responses to those um, three questions, and you feel that you um, understand uh, the root word auto that comes from the Greek language and how it is used in lots of different words okay so good work there and we'll take a different one of these next lesson to look at um, you've got a little challenge at the bottom there uh, what does autonomous mean okay I'll leave that one with you um, right I'm gonna make myself that bit smaller here because I'm covering up some can't do it. There we are. Covering up some of the text there. You don't need to see me quite as big. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna start as promised. I'm sure you're really excited about this. Um, we're gonna start with looking at uh, compound sentences. Um, I think one of the really important skills to think about as we're moving into um, towards your GCSEs is that the different sentence lengths that you use in your writing really add a richness um, to uh, the different things that you're trying to do within the writing, be it detailed description, be it uh, upping the pace and making things happen fast, building tension, slowing the pace down. There's lots of different things you want to do. And you want to take your reader on a bit of a roller coaster ride in your story and you are in control. Um, we should get the word auto in there, shouldn't we, somewhere? Um, and you're the one, so you're being an autocratic leader here because you are deciding, there you go, I've got it in, you are deciding the experience and the journey that your reader goes on and a reader will enjoy being taken on that ride. You don't really need to tell them everything at first. You can, you know, deliver information to them very slowly. You can sometimes be vague, but... Um, one thing's for sure, you need to have really secure understanding and use of the different types of sentences to get the most out of your writing. So I'm hoping that what we can do over the next couple of weeks is I can keep showing you different um, elements of sentence construction that you can use. This really is like the skeleton to your writing. So you need to have this skeleton and you need to know where all the bones go why they are there and then your description and your words and the vocabulary that you are using um, is the flesh that you put around the skeleton 
Now, um, we're going to start with compound sentences because um, I think they are underutilised in a lot of writing. I see a lot of students using many, many simple sentences all the time, or not even thinking about their sentences, not even putting in the right punctuation. Um, and then they remember that they've got to perhaps put some clauses in, so they start using some complex sentences, maybe. Um, but we miss out on these compound sentences, which I think are really useful in your writing. And we're going to look today at how you can use that. So um, let's just have a look and check that we're really happy with what a compound sentence is. Um, it's two things, isn't it? So a coordinating conjunctions are types of conjunctions that help to form compound sentences. So let's have a look. Um, there are seven coordinating conjunctions, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. So at this point in the lesson, I think what would be really useful is if you were to um, have a new page in your um, English book or if you're writing on paper or a new piece of paper um, and start um, the heading with compound sentences and then each time we do one of these each lesson you can add to that particular page with all the different sentence constructions that we're working on. Um, and so if you um, think you might forget these, it'd be a good idea to write down the seven coordinating conjunctions because I think they're going to be really useful. Um, and this is a mnemonic to help you remember. Um, so it's another word made up of the first letter of each word that you need to remember and that's your mnemonic um, and it's fanboys um, so we've got for and nor but or yet and so and these coordinating conjunctions are really useful um, in a compound sentence okay so um, a compound sentence, as most of you are aware of, um, is uh, where we have two clauses in a sentence. Um, one is the main clause um, and it's linked with a coordinating conjunction to another clause. Um, so here's an example. I was boiling hot, that's the main clause, comma, so... I left my jumper in the car. So it was two parts to the sentence. Um, I was boiling hot. If you put a full stop there, that's a complete sentence, isn't it? You've got, you know, the, the verb was, um, and you've got the subject, I, and that's it. That's all you need. You need a subject and you need a verb and then you've got a complete sentence. So you could put a full stop there. Um, but seeing as, this is an extra piece of information um, with the word so, so I left my jumper in the car. That part of it is not a complete sentence because of the word so. So we know that that is added on. So here you have your two, um, two different clauses. Um, here's another one. The election was rigged, yet the government would not relinquish control. Okay. So, okay, first task then, um, I want you to turn these simple sentences into compound sentences by adding a coordinating conjunction and another main clause. So you're going to have to choose one of fanboys for and nor but or yet or so um, and then choose what the next clause is going to be. Okay, so here is the first one. The water glistened in technicolour, okay? Her eyes closed for the final time. The words remained unspoken. I have never liked horses. Okay, so at this point you're going to pause the video to uh, write your compound sentences. Um, let me just remind you, you're using one of fanboys, okay, um, which is here, so your coordinating conjunction, you're using one of them, um, and you will need to replace that, full stop, with a comma, um, use one of your coordinating conjunctions, and you create this second clause, so it can be as inventive as you like, okay? Um, and so I'd like you to pause the video now, please. 
Okay, well done. Um, hopefully you have uh, come up with some brilliant compound sentences there. Um, I know it seems really straightforward for some of you, uh, but it doesn't harm practicing this, uh, these different grammatical structures, because even though you might know this, doesn't necessarily mean that you're always using it in your writing. So this is just a good practice of the skill. Okay, the next one. Um, again, you're going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to choose a coordinating conjunction and you're going to choose another main clause. We've got some different ones here. They're slightly harder, okay? I wanted an environmentally sound electric car. Maurice didn't want to open the envelope. His name was Gary. Sometimes you find yourself lost for words. Okay, so you know what to do. You are changing the full stop for a comma. You're choosing a coordinated conjunction. And then you are writing the second clause in that sentence. Okay, so stop and pause the video now, please. Okay, well done. Hopefully you've managed to uh, do all eight of those sentences um, and you've had some really good practice at putting together your compound sentences. Um, now, this time you're going to write down the answers to these questions, okay, because I am testing you, right? So close your book and you can either say them out loud, you know, I'll pretend I can hear you, okay, just say them out loud or you can write them down in the back of your book or on a piece of paper, um, but I don't want you to look Okay, I want you to close the book and see if you can remember it's retrieval practice. You've just learnt it and I want you to try and remember it. Okay, so the first one is, what is a compound sentence? Come on, tell me. Can't hear you. Okay, well done. What are the seven coordinating conjunctions? No, no, you haven't got it yet. Do you use a comma when linking sentences using a coordinating conjunction? A resounding yes? Good. What must you include in a compound sentence? Um, okay, so hopefully those were very easy for you. And you would have said that a compound sentence has two clauses, okay? Um, you would have said that uh, the seven coordinating conjunctions, just go back and look at fanboys, yeah? Uh, you said yes to the comma, I heard you. And what must you include in a compound sentence? Well, there has to be two clauses. There has to be a comma and a coordinating conjunction usually yeah yeah um so there you go lots of things okay so if you got all of those right give yourself a bit of a pat on the back well done and here we go take a deep breath well done right that's the second part of the lesson um now we are going to the gym okay um as you can see oops no hopefully not like that um, we are going to uh, go to the creative writing gym, okay? We're going to practice our skills. This is part one, okay? Part one. I've got lots and lots of different things that I can teach you. Um, and we're going to start with reminding ourselves, I don't know why that happened. We're going to start by reminding ourselves of what we already know. We have been practicing creative writing. Well, you have been practicing creative writing all the way through primary school. You've been practicing it all the way from year seven, right up until now. And it's a skill that we are always developing and always practicing. Uh, now we're really looking ahead to uh, next year where you're going to be building these skills in a way that will allow you to get as many marks as possible in your GCSE exam. And there are lots of things that examiners look for. Um, and one thing I should say to you now is that in your GCSE English exam, 50, yes, 50% 50 of the marks comes from creative writing. So if you like creative writing, brilliant. 
If you don't like creative writing, then listen to this lesson, okay? And this is going to help you. So let's start with what we already know. Um, you will have done various schemes of learning since year seven where we've looked at the powerful opening and how important a powerful opening is. Um, and so you already know that that first sentence is what draws your reader in, hooks them, um, and there's lots of different things that we can do um, to create a powerful opening. I'm not going to go through them all now. Um, you have done this before, um, but I will go over and look at different powerful openings as well. Um, and I do have a little trick up my sleeve of, um, I have a couple of openings that I often use when in exam condition, I kind of go to those. Um, and I'm going to share them with you um, over the next couple of weeks. And maybe you can come up with some of your own. Um, half the fear um, is looking at the blank paper. You know, you're sitting there, you're being asked to, to do something, to do a piece of writing, and you're staring at the blank piece of paper. So if you have an opening sentence that you know you can go to, that's really helpful. Okay, words are really important, adjectives and verbs. And what I mean by that is that I really want you to be thinking about the best choice of adjectives and the best choice of verbs as well. And um, appeal to the senses. So what can you see? What can you hear? Uh, what can you touch? What can you taste? What can you smell? all that kind of stuff. If you don't do that, then your reader is unable to imagine themselves um, in, in what, you're what you're describing. And so it's really, really important that you give them the senses so that they are able to immerse themselves into your story. They need to imagine themselves there. They need to be able to picture it. They need to be able to hear it. Um, so appealing to the senses, We've already spoken about this. Um, writing using different sentence lengths is really important. This is where you put your compound sentences in. Spag, you cannot get away from it. Spag is really, really important. You get um, marked on spag, obviously, in your GCSE English. Um, so it's worth getting into practice at looking back and checking your writing for errors. Um, and structure is important, um, in particular paragraphing. If I was to say there's one thing that students fail to do um, in exams, it will be writing in paragraphs. They, they remember all of this other stuff, but paragraphs just go down the window. Um, so just in case, and you might need a piece of paper and a pen here to write this down, just in case you have forgotten the rules, here we are tip top paragraphs. You will have heard this before, um, but if you haven't remembered this, um, then do write it down. You change paragraphs when you change time, change the topic, change the place, change the person, you know, um, and there's lots of other times that you can change the paragraph as well um, creatively, but these are the correct times that you should do it. So you really need to feel really secure with using tip top paragraphs, okay? So pause the video and make a note of this if you think you might forget. Right, on to our main task for this lesson. Um, so I did say at the beginning that one of the um, things that we were going to look at today is a structure for you to use um, in approaching creative writing in terms of writing description. So here's a picture that I have found um, and I'm going to show you how I would approach this. So in your GCSE English language exam you are actually given a picture and it could be a picture like this um, and you will be asked to write a description uh, based on this picture. And that's, that's all you're given. Um, and some students love the idea of the visual. Some students don't know where to start. And I must admit, it is a quite a daunting thing. You know, how do I start? I've got this picture. What, what am I meant to do? Um, well, you can try this, okay? It really is as simple as five, three, one. No, it really is that simple, okay? So five, is 
describe the setting using the five senses okay really important as i said your reader has to imagine themselves in your piece of writing that's what they're reading that's their experience um, so you've got your five senses describe the setting using the five senses okay so now you know you're going to start with that the three, that could be going to you first. Um, the three is I then want you to zoom in on three specific things. And this is where you start imagining yourself like a film director. Um, and you imagine your eyes are the camera and you zoom in on three things. Now, in an ideal world, you'll zoom in on some really unusual things. You might want to try and notice something in the picture that not everyone else is going to notice. Really look for the detail somewhere, hidden behind things, things that not everyone's going to see. Um, and so zoom in on three specific things and you're going to um, describe those three things in detail. And I want you to go right into a close up, okay? And then the last one is build one episode of tension or ellipsis. Um, you can see I used ellipsis here. It's the three dots. It's when an idea or something is unfinished um, and you have you leave it like a kind of cliffhanger. So you could end it on a cliffhanger. Um, or you can build an episode of tension um, at the end. So you start by describing the setting using the five senses. This then allows the reader to imagine and picture the scene. They can start to feel what it's like. They can hear what it's like. Then you direct where the reader looks and you zoom in on three unusual things and you describe them in detail. So that allows the reader that element of detail. And then you want to take them on that roller coaster ride. You start building up tension and something big is about to happen either it happens or you leave a cliffhanger and you do the ellipsis um, and that's a structure that I think you can use um, for any picture so let's go back to this picture okay so um, I didn't find this the easiest picture actually to do um, and so I'm thinking of my 531 so I would perhaps start with something like this. Um, my visuals, I could see electric reds, burning fires, plumes of smoke, hell. And I put hell there because, um, you know, you want to, with your visuals, you want to put imagery in there, maybe similes, maybe metaphors, maybe personification. Um, so I was thinking of some kind of contrast with hell, the mouth of hell, or something like that if I wanted to bring in a, a metaphor. I wasn't sure how to write the metaphor at this stage, so I just put hell as the comparison, and then later on I will find a way of wording that. Um, and then sound, I was thinking of crackling, rumbling, maybe cries, it could be cries for from nature, it could be cries from humans. Um, and then touch, I was thinking of the heat, I might be able to feel the heat burning against my cheek. Um, crumbling wood, maybe I, I go to grab something to um, stabilise myself and it crumbles in my hand or something, um, and you know, rough and things like that. So you can think of all sorts of things. Um, and then taste, I was thinking of the choking acid smoke in my throat um, and the smell, the burning fireworks. I was trying to think of something um, I could compare it to, you know, that burning smell of the fireworks. Um, and I was kind of thinking of that. But I actually do think you guys can do much better than than me with that. Um, so that was my sort of planning for that. Um, and then um, I was thinking about the three things I would zoom in on. Um, and there's not an awful lot of detail, actually, that you can pick out in this picture, I was thinking. Um, but I was thinking of these electric wires, string, and then I thought scribble. I thought that looked a bit like a, you know, electricity scribble across it. Um, and so I thought maybe I would... I would focus on, on that little area for some reason. Um, and then um, I thought I would focus on this lonely tree just there. I thought that was quite interesting. Um, and then I liked the sort of um, red reflection on the trees. I thought that was kind of interesting. So I might zoom in 
um, and look at a close-up of that and, and try and describe that in detail. Then the final one for tension, I thought of some sentences where I might describe the growing crackling sound and the sparks flying and then I might just have silence and then and either you know do a, an ellipsis or you know build up a massive explosion or something um so uh, you know this this would be my planning for it and then i would start writing it um and i think you know planning is is absolutely crucial when it comes to creative writing you you can't do a good piece of creative writing unless you've planned it. Um, you wouldn't stand up and present a speech at an assembly if you didn't have notes and have it prepared. And it's the same with your writing. There's no way your brain can can plan it, um, can create it at the same time as your hand is writing it. So the planning side of it really is important and you need to get used to planning your writing. So that's how I would do it. If you want to, you can have a go at doing it with this picture. Um, what I would like you to look at is either this picture, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I liked the, the, the unusual sky, set a, an interesting tone, um, and I liked the, the bright colours, um, but it's also a fairground that's sort of abandoned as well by the look of it. I couldn't see many people there. Um, against this sort of ominous sky, I was trying to imagine the sounds you could hear. I thought that was quite an interesting picture. Um, so you can choose this one, or if you prefer, you can go with this one, which is a completely different thing altogether, a very sort of ordinary picture, but then, but something where, you know, you can still appeal to the senses, especially sound and your visuals um, and things like that. So you've got a choice between this one and this one. Now I'll put the PowerPoint on show my homework um, so that uh, you can get it yourself or you can just pause the video here and have a go yourself. So all I want you to do is to do uh, a little bit of planning first and then write it out. It doesn't have to be a long piece of description. What's really important here is just practicing the skill and I want you to remember a couple of things. We've got 531 and then we've got compound sentences, okay? And those are the couple of things that I want you to focus on um, for this piece of writing. Um, okay, so if you're going to pause the video, do that now, please. Um, or you might look, watch to the end and then do it afterwards, okay? So once you have done that piece of writing, well done, first of all. Um, and I want you to get used to the idea of editing. Editing is really important. So your first draft is just that. It's a first draft. Um, and look here, this is what I kind of want your piece of writing to look like. And you can't be precious about the presentation. This is a draft. So I want you to be looking at how you can improve it. Now, by the time you're in year 11, you'll be so good at this, your editing won't be as bad as this. Um, but between now and then, you've got a lot of practice you can do with editing to improve. Um, and you would be surprised, I am a GCSE examiner and I mark uh, the English language and English literature AQA papers, okay? So I'm employed by AQA. And you would be surprised the number of marks that I give students when they have edited and they've added stuff in. It's incredible. Um, and for some students, it's been absolutely crucial. If they hadn't edited, they wouldn't have done well. And the editing has um, added more than half the marks sometimes. So it's not a joke. It really is um, a useful thing for you to practice. So... I want you to have a look at your use of the 531 structure. Did it work for you? Um, you know, was it able to, to give you um, a starting point from which to build your writing on? Um, I also want you to go back and have a look at your verb um, and adjective choices because um, you can always choose a better word, always. 
Um, that's why the English language have so many synonyms. Um, you can choose the better word, okay? And if that means using a thesaurus um, online or, or an actual thesaurus you have at home, then do it. This is the time to practice. Um, it's a crucial step to improving your writing, okay? So your character, if they're, you know, they're, they didn't just walk, they strutted, they stormed, they, you know, whatever, sauntered. Um, find a better verb, find a better adjective. Um, and then obviously the different sentence sentences are, are really important. So um, I want you to go through and underline where you've used a, a compound sentence, okay? Um, and have they added anything to your description? And equally, I want you to look for opportunities where you could have used a compound sentence, but you used a simple sentence. So think of things where you could make a comparison, for example, in your visual description by using a compound sentence. I think that would be um, a really good thing to look at. Um, so once you have done that, and I just want to remind you that I want it to look at least like that, okay? Um, I would like you to take a picture of your beautifully edited work, scrawled all over, written in a different colour pen, crossed out, things added in, that's, that's what I want to see, okay? Um, and I'd love you to take a picture of your beautifully edited work and put it on show my homework for me to see. I want to see that you have worked on this piece of writing, okay? Um, now, the next lesson that you have is a show my homework lesson and there will be a follow on to what we've done today. And the next video lesson, we will look at even more tips um, of how to improve your writing even further. OK, um, thank you very much for staying with me until the end um, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.